I'm Raven, and welcome to this tutorial on how to configure audio compressors and ducking in the new OBS version 21.0.1. .1. This version of OBS introduces a new audio ducking feature as part of its compression filter. Normally I would do this as part of my post-production routine, but using this we can do it live on the fly. In a nutshell, you would use audio ducking where you have two competing audio sources, but one is more important than the other. For example, your game audio and your microphone. When you're speaking into the microphone, you want the game audio to fade into the background so people can hear you clearly. But when you're not speaking, the game audio comes back so that the people watching at home can hear dialogue and cutscenes. I've split this video up into two sections, one for audio compressors and one for the ducking feature. Check the description for the time codes if you want to skip ahead. In order to understand how the ducker works, you need to first know how the audio compressor works. So, if you're brand new to this or have no idea how an audio compressor works, just keep watching and I'll explain it all. Let's see how it's done. I'm not going to go into technical details about what an audio compressor is, beyond a brief non-technical overview for the layman. An audio compressor reduces the volume of audio above a certain threshold, perfect for dealing with situations where your audio can go from very quiet to unexpectedly loud. It does this using a ratio, such as 3 to 1. For every 3 decibels over the threshold, the volume only goes up by 1 decibel. The higher the ratio, the lower the volume will stay when over the threshold. The downside to this is the lower the threshold and the higher the ratio, the worse your audio quality will be. Everything will sound very flat. Ideally, you want to have the highest threshold and the lowest ratio needed to achieve the desired audio balance. Without ducking, you would generally have your microphone audio noticeably higher than your background audio. This is fine when you are talking, however in periods of silence the game audio remains low, sometimes too low for cutscenes or sections of dialogue. They never learn. Instead, to make effective use of ducking, we want both of our audio sources to be equally balanced. During normal play, you want your audio to be sitting around minus 10 decibels, by normal, I mean speaking into your microphone or the noise of general gameplay. This is a rule of thumb and can be adjusted to suit your personal tastes. Any audio going above zero decibels is clipping and won't sound very good. As part of this OBS update, the audio mixer now features a peak volume meter, allowing you to see your audio levels in real time. Adjust each of your audio sources one at a time until they are both registering at around minus 10 decibels. Don't worry if it fluctuates up and down around that point as long as it generally reaches that level. With our audio sources balanced, we can now add compressors to them. Right click your audio source in the OBS mixer panel and click filters. Click the plus button and select compressor. Either leave the name as compressor or name it something sensible. You may add other filters to the audio track and you don't want to get them mixed up three months down the line. Select your new compressor and you will see several configuration options. Ratio defines how many decibels in volume the source audio must be over the threshold for the compressed audio to go up one decibel in volume. You want the setting to be as low as possible. The higher the ratio, the flatter your audio will sound. Threshold defines the volume in decibels at which compression should be applied. You want the setting to be as high as possible, as close to zero. Any audio above the volume threshold will be subject to compression. Attack defines how gradual the compression should be applied going from off to fully on. Low values will result in very sudden volume changes, while higher values will result in very smooth, gradual changes. Release defines the opposite of attack, how gradual the compression goes from fully on to off. As with attack, low values will result in very sudden volume changes, while higher values will result in very smooth, gradual changes. It is likely that your release value will be higher than your attack value. Output gain applies a flat volume adjustment to the audio track to compensate for the compressor. You want this to be as close to zero decibels as possible. If your compressor and audio sources are correctly configured, you shouldn't need much gain. Sidechain slash ducking source defines another audio input which will activate the compressor. We'll look at the setting later on in the audio ducking section. With your compressor applied, it now needs to be configured. Our goal with the compressor is to prevent our audio source from clipping zero decibels. You can tell when this happens by looking at the OBS mixer panel and watching the peak indicators. If they turn red, your audio is too loud. First, set the ratio to the lowest setting and the threshold to its highest setting, 1 to 1 and 0 decibels respectively. This effectively disables the compressor, 
but gives us a clean starting point. Next, run some audio at a normal level. If you have balanced your audio source correctly, it should be sitting around minus 10 decibels. Now find a section of audio that causes the volume to go above minus 10 decibels, or even peak. This could be someone shouting, a gunshot, or a loud section of a song. This is what we want to make quieter with the compressor. Pay attention to how much over the mark the volume is going. If your audio is only going slightly over, you only need to apply a gentle compressor. If the audio is peaking far beyond the meter, you will need to be more aggressive. As a starting point, set the ratio to 2 and the threshold to minus 15 decibels. Any audio that is louder than minus 15 decibels will be halved in volume. Run your normal and peaking audio again and see what happens. Play with the ratio and threshold to see how the two affect each other. Increasing the ratio more heavily reduces the audio volume. Lowering the threshold applies that reduction to more of the audio. The final step is to tweak your attack, release and output gain. If, after compression, your audio at a normal level is too low, increase the output gain to compensate. Increase and decrease the attack and release values to smooth the changes in audio level. As an example, for a one microphone, one game setup, I use these two compressors. On the microphone, I have configured the compressor to heavily reduce the volume of any noise above that minus 10 decibels target. This allows my voice to generally be unaffected by the compression while covering coughs, knocking the microphone, and shouting. Over on the game input, I have a much gentler compressor that begins to reduce the volume of the game before it reaches the minus 10 decibels mark. You will note that both my attack and release settings are very sharp. I don't want my audio to be compressed for any longer than is needed. If you find there are noticeable volume spikes in your compressed audio, I would work in increments of 25 milliseconds until it sounds right to you. Now that we understand how compressors work, we can look at the audio ducking feature of OBS. When you have one audio source that is more important than another, Ducking is an ideal way to push one audio track into the background so the other can be heard clearly. In OBS, audio ducking is done as part of the compressor. You won't want to apply this to the same compressor that you are using to prevent audio peaking, however. When you set a ducking source, the compressor only becomes active when the selected source is making noise. Here's how to set one up. In the OBS mixer panel, right-click the audio source that you want to duck, and click Filters. This should be the audio source that you want to reduce in volume, such as your game audio. Click the plus button and add a new compressor. I strongly advise naming this new compressor Ducker. Generally, you should keep this Ducker at the bottom of your filter stack. An audio Ducker is configured in the same way as a compressor. However, it requires a slightly different mindset. Instead of aiming to reduce audio volume to prevent clipping, we want to reduce the audio volume to the point where the other audio channel can be clearly heard. At the bottom of the compressor is the sidechain slash ducking source setting. From the drop-down list, select the audio input source that should cause the ducker to activate, a microphone for example. Next, set the audio threshold to the lowest volume level that you want your audio to drop to. You can determine this with some trial and error by adjusting the volume slider of your input in the OBS mixer, or by listening to a recording of your background audio at a reduced level compared to the ducking source. Now set the ratio. This will take some trial and error to get right. The louder, more prominent your input audio is, the higher the ratio will need to be to make the ducking source sound distinct. Record short clips of the ducker in action, gradually tweaking the ratio in half steps. Finally, set the attack and release to smooth the audio ducking. Unlike an audio compressor, where you are changing the volume of the audio track in comparison to itself, you are changing the volume in comparison to the source. Very low attack and release values can give people audio whiplash, as the volume changes too suddenly, too frequently. A high attack value will soften the fade out of the background audio. A high release value will soften the fade in of the background, as well as smooth over gaps or pauses in the ducking source. For example, when speaking, a person is likely to pause between sentences, stop for breath, or hesitate when thinking. A low release value will cause the background audio to whip back into the foreground between words, where a high release value will keep the background audio quiet long enough for the person to resume speaking uninterrupted. Here is an example of audio ducking horribly, horribly jarringly wrong. Here's an example of audio ducking that is smooth. I prefer smoother ducking, so I have my attack and release values set to 400 milliseconds each. You'll need to play with the values in the context of what you're recording until you find a value that works for you. 
If it is important that your background audio is brought back quickly, such as for sports or presentations, use a lower release value. If it's important that your foreground audio is clearly heard, such as for commentary, use a lower attack value. Ready and here we go, giving the ducking a good old test. This is of course serious, Sam. Ooh, that's unfortunate for those guys. I'm just going to go ahead and just run through this level pretty quickly. Because the point here is just to demonstrate what my uh, ducking settings sound like. Oh yeah, double your gun, double your fun. Too bad for yeah, that guy though. Funny games until somebody loses an eye. You said it, Sam. I will not push you to read the message. I will instead hop right past this room entirely. Bye bye. And now we're talking. Let's grab that shotgun. Yeah, baby. Boom. 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 Oh dear. Oh, so sad. What's that? Oh, oh, you take it too. That everyone? Oh. I missed. Oh no. Oh, there it is. No, that's armor. There it is. I knew there's ammunition around here somewhere. And here comes the clear. Oop. And there we go. That's what my audio ducking sounds like on these settings. So there you have it. Everything you need to know about using compressors and audio ducking in OBS. Though of course the principles do apply to any general compressor that you're likely to encounter out there. Give or take a few little, you know, personality tweaks. If you have any questions, if anything is unclear to you, or if you'd like to see a tutorial on a specific topic, feel free to leave a comment down below. But until next time, I'm Raven, and that's all from The Lair.